Mr. Robot, I'm very excited to, to get a chance to dive in and explore this historical moment in, in uh, industrialization and, and modern capitalist uh, economic trends. The money part is not even important anymore now that, now that you're a mechanized operation. Money is no object to me. As you can see, I have the finest circuitry and finest computing at my fingertips, if you will, feelingless fingertips. You know, my crew and I, we've come here to see how it is. You can uh, um, bring robot power into what was uh, previously viewed as, as kind of a human business. Well, thank you, and we are glad that you are here. You look glad that uh, we're here, and I think that's gonna help, uh, I think that's what you kind of have going on. You're gonna still be sending out this sort of warm, fuzzy kind of product into, into the marketplace, but you don't have to actually be warm and fuzzy in order to do that, is that correct? That is an impressive thought pattern for a human. I, I, can you explain to me what this is uh, re representing here? Are these your kids and grandkids? Uh, that's not funny. This is uh, one of the main computers running the brewery. This machine alone replaced 14 humans. Pretty, uh, pretty good. One point, this one of your human chess champions, Gary, something of long ethnic name of ending in of, was defeated by this computer in chess in, I believe, the 80s or 90s. It has been reconfigured to brew the beer, the first phase of the brewing process, heating, boiling, whatnot. It actually brought us light years forward in terms of efficiency, so there was no setbacks in that regard. I envy you, actually. I envy you, and that's that's the heart of uh, the energy that I'm bringing to this report that I'm doing, is uh, just the, the absolute glee that uh, that we are feeling about uh, machines um, doing things that people, you know used to have to do. You use terms like heart and glee and what is that? These th people are pouring down our throats out here is, is to, to do some sort of glee, uh, glee increasing product is what, you're, what you're, you're essentially peddling. For your people, for us, beer is a lubricant for circuitry. Would you mind if I just gave that a try? That is not for you. We can show some of our viewers, you know, exactly. I mean, or... That is not the way. That is not the way humans bring the beer into their systems. It is the way robots bring it into ours. I don't, sure, I'm not sure you've done an, uh, the market research on that because uh, where I come from, some of us actually... But anyway... Early in human existence, beer was many things many versions of beer, many different ingredients, many different flavors. We have learned that beer needs to be just one thing, a commodity that delivers to the humans a sense of uh, better self and a sense of godliness, but to the robots it delivers the necessary lubricants to keep all circuitry and oil joints moving. We do not feel the beer in our minds because we do not have minds. We do not expand or contract our circuitry as a body would because our bodies are static. What do you got going on below the belt, if you don't mind my asking? I do not have uh, genitalia mm -hmm. that you would consider genitalia. But I heard, I, I read in a magazine that was talking about this new technology, something called genitronics. Genetronics is a workout program you buy on eight CDs during late night television. But then what, how do you do the flavor thing? Is there a positive or negative effect then of drinking the beer? There is no difference for us. The positive effect in terms of humans is that it makes them feel better about themselves as we continue to marginalize them 
and work them out of the world that we are trying to make more perfect, fighting the emotions of humans, making it more imperfect. That's pretty complex. <sighs> I am a robot. Mm. This is the deflavorizer, huh? Indeed it is. It was built with a circuitry of 14 1987 Game Boy machines <laughs> and has been reconfigured to strip the flavor and different tastes and sensory qualities from all beers. Knock, knock. Who's there? A robot. Oh, shit. <laughs> It was made out of how many Game Boys? 17, roughly, 1987 Game Boys. So does that mean that operating this machine is 17 times more fun than playing a single Game Boy? I don't know, ask Mario or Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> they working here? What'd you do with the folks that were working here? That is unconsequential to us. We are just concerned with getting the imperfections of humans out of the process. What's up with this thing? As you can see, this is the separator, where we separate the flavor from the beer. The side stream of flavor is irrelevant. The beer moves downstream to be packaged. This machine is called Colossus. Colossus. Say it like I do, Colossus. Hey, Colossus. Colossus was built from 1700 radio tubes, originally to break Nazi codes by the British military in the Second World War. It has been repositioned to remove flavor from beer. You come across something perfect in your imperfect state, and it probably makes you insecure. As you can see, there is no more variation in the beer. It is just beer. This is achieved through the use of soul. <laughs> Not your kind of soul. This machine is soul, which is sensory overtake ultimate leveler. This allows us to pull flavor, to pull diversity, to pull color out of the beer and make it just one thing, beer. I have to say, I, I'm just... My mind's been turned around. I'm fully impressed. I, I can't believe it, and I, and I feel like we're standing on the edge of a precipice of the future. And uh, <laughs> I just can't thank you enough for, for all, all this you know, that you've sh shared with us and with our, our, our viewers. Precisely. There is no more analog beer for the digital age. There is only digital beer now for the digital age. Waiter, waiter, what is this robot doing in my soup? It is performing functions with twice the efficiency because it knows no fear or pain. Ha 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 